For the final video in this series, what we'll do is look a bit more at observations and choices. So what we're going to do is modify the contract we've been working on to do one final thing. What the, what the contract we have at the moment does is it waits for a deposit and then makes a payment. Let's instead pull out that. This is a nice thing about this textual um, editor. And let's say instead what we're going to do is we're going to um, perform a, um, we're going to make a, a, a choice and then based on that choice we're going to, um, we're going to either make a payment to Bob or to Alice. Now let's see if we can, if we select all of this. duplicated that. So here we've got a payment to Bob from Alice. And we can also make that a payment to Alice from Alice. So in this situation, a payment goes from Alice to Bob. In this situation, a payment goes from Alice back to herself. So what we're going to do is put those inside this if statement. So now we've got a contract that does one thing or the other. And then we have to think, what are we going to base our, um, our observation on? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to, um, here we're waiting for a deposit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wait for a second um, action. And that action is going to be a choice. So we're going to have a choice of, let's call it, um, a or B, and the choice owner is going to be Carol. So Carol will make the choice, and the choice bounds, and here we use bounds, are going to be between one and two. So what happens here, the top level contract, we first of all had take a deposit, then we make a choice, and then we continue as what we developed here. So, um, we have to decide um, this observation and let's have a look at what observations we can make. Um, we want, let's check this, we can say if the value of, um, what values do we have? We have a choice name, the value of choice A or B by um, that's by Carol with a default value of, let's say, constant. So if the choice isn't made, we'll say it has a default value of, z whoops, default value of zero. And we're saying we want that to be greater than or equal to two. So you can see again, I'm using cutting and pasting here. So if the choice by of A or B by Carol is greater than or equal to two, then Bob gets paid. Otherwise, um, Alice gets paid. Now, the only thing, the only slot missing in here is we need to say uh, we 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 have to have a period of time for Alice uh, for Carol to make her choice. Let's say that's up to slot twenty. And then otherwise we do as we would always do, we simply close the contract down. And now we should have a complete contract which we can turn to code. Okay, and let's have a look at simulating this. We get to, um, let's add Alice's uh, deposit. We apply that and you will see when I apply this transaction, you'll see that the contract in the main window changes to reflect that. And now we're in a choice where Alice, Carol makes a choice of um, one or two. If Carol makes the choice of one, we will apply that and um, a payment is made. Whoops. Alice is, the money has gone back to Alice. If we undo this, undo it again, make the choice of two, add that to the transaction and apply it, 
we'll see that the money has gone to Bob. So there we see, um, and we're using here the undoing a single step to try different um, constructs in the contract. Let's go back to the Blockly window and just, just conclude here. We see, you can see that we in this example, we've used a when construct, waiting for an action. We have used a pay construct. We've used an if. So depending on an observation we might make, the contract can go in two directions. Observations we can make are, are just things we can observe about values. And values can be how much currency there is in an account. It can be a constant. It can be a choice, as we saw here. It can be the, um, the value of the particular slot interval we're in. Um, and then we have actions, and these are impacting on the contract from the outside world, making a deposit, making a choice, or notifying a, a particular value. We've seen payees, so a payment can be made to another account, or it can be made to a party in the contract. Parties themselves can be a public key or a, a, a more abstract role. Um, we have tokens, either we have ADA or we have um, other custom currencies, um, which are provided by the Plutus platform. And then we have, finally, we have bounds saying when we're looking for a, a choice, we make the choice bounded so that there isn't, um, there's only a finite number of choices that can be made. OK, so that has covered, that's covered the Marlowe, most of the constructs of the Marlowe language. It has shown how we build things interactively in the editor. Um, it's shown how we can use you know, cut and paste. We can also, by right clicking here, collapse blocks and expand them if we wish. We can um, delete them all. Um, we can do so. There is a um, there's the, the usual editor functions available with right click, and we can use um, copy and paste in the editor pane. Too. So it gives us a very uh, you know, a, an easy way to get started writing Marlowe contracts. And then once we've written a contract, we're able to move into the simulation pane and simulate its behavior. Okay, well that's it. That's it for, for me and for this from this short series of videos. Thanks very much for watching.